this is the history of the first indigenous Pentecostal movement in Nigeria. That I also tag the origin of Pentecostalism and the birth of the Aladira group. Around the year 1918, there was a cessation of the St. Saviour's Anglican Church in Jebude, a man popularly called Daddy Ali. He had a dream in which he saw the members of the Anglican Church parish divided into two. The first group was large but was in darkness because the group was not praying. The second group was small and was in sparkling light because it was praying. In the morning, he rushed to the vicar of St. Saviour's, Reverend Gonzalo, to relate the story to him. But the white man dismissed the dream as having no special meaning. Although Daddy Hali was disturbed and embarrassed by the response of the vicar, he believed that the dream had a meaning, so he left the vicar, but still unconvinced. A few days later, he saw the same vision. This time, he went to the people's warden, a self-employed goldsmith, and a member of the Lagos Synod of the church called Mr. Joseph Sadari, also known as Essesinade, and related the dream to him. Mr. Shadari immediately took steps to put the vision into effect by informing D.C. Oduga, E.O. Onobanjo, and E.O. W. Olukoya. Together with Daddy Hali, the five of them started to pray at regular intervals. Soon, other members of the church joined the praying group. Through to the vision of Pa Ali, God began to manifest his power in their midst as they began to see the effects of answered prayers. The church vicar, Reverend Gonzalo, who had dismissed Pa Ali's vision as a result of oversleeping, gave them support. He reportedly joined them on some occasions to pray. He was said to be directing the group, the church members' prayers requests. The group which was holding its prayer meeting on Sunday evenings soon realized that it needed more time to pray as prayer requests were increasing. The group changed its prayer meeting to Monday afterwards. Around the same time, the Lord had called a young lady, a school teacher named Sophia Odunlami, a native of Insoni in the area. She had the gift of prophecy. She had an attack of influenza, which was ravaging Nigeria at the time, and which had killed several hundreds of people. This prophetess survived by following what the Holy Spirit told her to do. She thereafter became an advocate of divine healing. She recommended the use of sanctified water for the treatment of those attacked by the disease, and there was a tremendous survival rate among those who followed her instruction. She was introduced to the prayer group, and she became a member. Through her prophecy, the group was instructed against the eating of cola nuts, drinking alcoholic drink including palm wine, the use of amulets and juju belts called onde, and juju rings and pieces of jewelry. Sophia Odulami not only preached God's message in the Jebode and its environment, but she also went as far as Ibadan to preach. The prayer group, which at this stage is now known as the Precious Stone Society, greatly benefited from the membership of this young prophetess, Sophia Odulami. Another person whose membership also had a great impact on the society then was Mr. David Osmond Ogunleye Odubancho. This is the account of how the Precious Stone group um, later on became the Faith Tabernacle. The classification of Christ's Apostolic Church as a daughter church of the Apostolic Church became more illogical with the Apostolic Church author's admission of the fact that 
Christ Apostolic Church was established on the pioneering work which started in 1918 at St. Saviour's Anglican Church, Ijebode, when Joseph Shadare, aka Eshishina Day, Sophia Odunlami, Mr. David Ogunleya Odubanjo, and holders of like mind formed a prayer group supported by the clergyman of the church at the initial state. Once this fact had been admitted, there was no basis to say that the Apostolic Church gave birth to Christ Apostolic Church again. The reason is that it is not possible for both the mother and her daughter to be born the same day by the same parents. The Apostolic Church authors admitted that the prayer group, which started in 1918 and led by Joseph Shadare and later D.O. Odubanjo, grew to become a formidable society named Precious Stone Society or Diamond Society. And within a short time, the society was formed in all the branches of the Anglican Church. The society, which was holding its prayer meetings in the premises of St. Saviour's Anglican Church, Ijebode, had its faith in the power of God to perform miracles, bolstered during the influenza epidemic, known then as Asia Nulukuluku, that broke out shortly after the First World War. Through the power of prayer, most of the members of the church and the relations of the prayer band's members who were infected by the viral disease were healed as the group prayed for them and as they adhered to the prophetic directives of Miss Sophia or Dunlami. The prayer band's exploit became known in other Anglican church branches and people of like minds formed pressure stone or diamond groups in various Anglican branches in Lagos, Ibadan, Elisha, Onyon, and Ileife. Soon, tension rose between the group and the leadership of Anglican Church at Ijebode, as the band members were seen as radical and non-conformist elements who were unchanging the status quo. This was due to the prayer band's belief in divine healing, opposition to infant baptism, reliance on dreams and vision, abstention from the reverie, dancing, drumming, drinking of alcohol, gambling, debt owing, idolatry, and mixing with non-Christian. As a result of the tension, members of the group were subjected to serious persecution. They were sent out of the church. Those of them who were employed by the church were forced to resign their employment. Mr. Joseph Shadari was compelled to give up his post at the Synod. Others were forced to withdraw their children from the Anglican church schools. Earlier in the life of the prayer band, David Odubanjo had established contact with the Faith Tabernacle of Philadelphia, USA, through Pastor A. Clark, its leader, with whom he exchanged correspondence. In turn, Pastor Clark would send tracts, especially the Sword of the Spirit, and publications which revived the group and helped to crystallize their doctrines. As the persecution of members of the prayer band intensified, the group had no choice but to affiliate with the Faith Tabernacle of Philadelphia, USA. In less than a decade, branches of the Faith Tabernacle had been established in Nigeria, especially in all the towns where Diamond Society had been operated. The group also spread their tentacles to Jars, Mina, Zaria, and other West African countries, including Ghana. The call of Apostle Joseph Hayo Babalola. The call of Apostle Joseph Hayo Babalola in October 1928 was to have salutary effects on and change the fortune of the Faith Tabernacle forever. Ayo Babalala was a roller driver who was posted to Akure Owena Elisha Road, then under construction by the Public Works Department. He was working under a British manager called Mr. Fagus, somewhere at Ikeji Arakeji. On October 9, 1928, the roller machine he was driving suddenly stopped. His boss, Mr. Ferguson, did everything to make the roller work, 
but to no avail. He, Babalola, later heard a clearly audible voice that sounded like the sound of thousands of thunder saying, Joseph, Joseph, if you don't quit this work, you will surely die this year. This was repeated on the second day at the same time without Joseph paying any attention to it. But on the third day, which was October 11, the voice called him as usual and it clearly told him that the ruler would never work unless he tendered his, resig his resignation later. Babalola now realized that he compulsively had to heed the warning, but before taking a decision, he asked the voice, Who are you calling me? And what work do you want me to do? The voice replied, If you resign and quit this work, I will show you what to do. Just in the similitude of Saul's encounter with Jesus on the way to Damascus, those who were with Ayo Babalola only heard Babalola's voice. They couldn't hear the voice he was speaking to. He resigned his appointment that day when he got to his residence at Ipetu Ijesha. The voice told him to fast for four days without eating anything in order for him to see who was talking to him. On the fourth day, the voice again asked him to add another three days to make the fast in seven days. Before the dawn of the seventh day, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Joseph Ayabalala face to face. The whole room was filled with the glory of God. His co-tenants in the house were in deep sleep all through the vision. Babalola was awakened by his sleep as he saw two heavenly angels. One was so tall, his head reached into heaven. The second figure was obviously Jesus. He wore a sparkling white robe. It was a tall heavenly figure that spoke to Babalola that the Lord Jesus Christ who stood before him instructed the angel to bring Babalola to the presence of Jesus Christ. The figure asked Babalola if he was hungry and he was ready to eat. As Babalola answered in the affirmative, he was given a cooked yam tuba, which was divided into two. He was given half of the yam to eat. Babalola was further told that the whole world is being fed by the other half. Babalola was also given a rod of iron, which was interpreted to him through Psalm 2 verse 8. He was also given a bottle of water with a firm instruction that he should always sanctify water for the healing of all diverse diseases. This was the reason why Babalola always sanctified stream of water flowing in any town before he was holding crusade. Till today, those streams are patronized by members of the public for healing of diverse diseases. Anybody who drinks or births with the sanctified water would get instant healing. Babalola also asked the Lord in his encounter how he would spread the gospel in a society full of wickedness and satanic forces without being attacked and harmed. The Lord showed him many things to confirm the fact that he had taking away all the powers of the forces of darkness. Pastor Adewale Halokon claimed that Babalola, who had operated independently from 1928, was instructed by God to link up with the Faith Tabernacle Con Con Congregation of Nigeria because they had the same doctrine and beliefs. Daniel Ajibola was to later link Babalola with the Faith Tabernacle group which had been praying for heaven sent revival since 1918. The group believed in holy living and that all forms of diseases could be healed through prayers. Once they saw him, they all accepted him as the answer to their prayers. Babalola's followers like J. A. Medayeshe, A. Huomotosho, John Hoye, and J. B. Orogun were also brought into the group later. Babalola was baptized by Pastor Ezechiel Day in 1929. <music> Thank you. 
the revival of 1930. The Faith Tabernacle leadership had fixed a meeting for Okeoye in July 1930 to resolve some doctrinal issues that had been causing disputes among them. Among those at the meeting at Okeoye, Elisha, were D.O. Odubanjo, I.B. Akiyele, later the Olubadan of Ibadan, and J.A. Babatope and Pastor Adegoyega. They were to later make available their wealth of experience in guiding Prophet Babalola in the revival that broke out later that day. At that meeting, the leadership had intended to introduce the young prophet to the rest of the leadership who had not met him. But while the meeting started, Babalola was in another room praying and waiting for them for the time when the agenda will reach that he be called to be introduced to the group. Some of the major issues on the agenda were faith healing, polygamy, and use of synthetic drugs for healing. The group had made it a taboo for any of its members to use black medicine prepared by herbalists or witch doctors. But there were some elements among the leadership who believed that the use of orthodox or synthetic medicine was not wrong. As the leaders were debating this issue, there was a morning procession passing through the streets of Okeoye in front of the church where the meeting was holding. A 12-year-old boy named Banji Ogudikwe, who had died the previous night, was being carried to where they would bury his remains. Um, another version from an eyewitness put the story this way. Babalola was holding a revival at Okeoye in Hilesha when the bereaved family brought the corpse of the 12-year-old boy, Bamiji Ogundipe, who died the previous night. Babalola was said to have asked the family to put the dead body under a table. He continued with his ministration. After his ministration, he took a, a water bottle and sprinkled on the dead body as he prayed for the boy to come to life. Immediately, the boy sneezed and came back to life. Whether the first version is correct or the second, one constant element in the story is that the revival of 1930 started simultaneously as the dead body, Bamaji Ogundipe, rose from the dead. There was an instant build now. The mourners suddenly went ecstatic. Their dodge dawned to praise of God and thus simultaneously began the 1930 revival. The meeting of the leaders was forced to an abrupt end as they joined the young prophet in the revival, which news reverberated through West Africa and beyond because hospitals were deserted for the revival venue, where all the sick and the infirm, those that had been bedridden, got instant healing. People possessed of evil spirits got instant deliverance and many idols and their owners were forced to part ways in a dramatic manner. Many possessing charms abandoned their evil possessions at the revival vein as they embraced Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. All the abandoned charms were later gathered for burning. News of the great revival spread like white fire in other town, and people from all over Nigeria and West Africa and other parts of Africa trooped to the revival ground in Indonesia where their yoke were broken. The great revival did not only embrace all the beliefs accepted by the faith tabernacle group, but also went further to embracing baptism of the Holy Spirit, the spiritual manifestation of seeing visions, prophesying, dreaming, and speaking in tongues. To show that God was indeed ready to demonstrate his power in the affairs of the church, also in October 1930, one of the evangelists who went to the Okeho Yerivaiva, Prophet Orokoya, had requested Joseph Ayobabalala to lay his hand on him before leaving Okehoye for his base in Lagos. On his way to Lagos, he branched at an assembly of Faith Tabernacle in Okebola, Ibada, where he started a revival program. During that revival, God used Prophet Orokoya to revive a pregnant woman named, named Abeho who had died four days with her advanced pregnancy. She later gave birth to a living baby. 
she also lived several years more to a ripe old age. From Faith Tabernacle to Christ Apostolic Church. Soon, the church began to expand at a rate that was unprecedented. At this time, the Faith Tabernacle in Nigeria had risen to discontinue its affiliation with the Faith Tabernacle of Philadelphia, USA. But despite this expansion, persecution from the British colonial authorities continued. The husband that brought the church in conflict with the state was faith healing as people were not showing up in the hospitals again. So on behalf of members of the church, David Odubanjo, who had been ordained as a pastor by the Faith Tabernacle, approached the British Apostolic Brothers in Bradford, England for cooperation. On September 23, 1931, Pastor D.P. Williams, A. Tombo, and W.J. Williams arrived in Nigeria as guests of the church. In November 1931, the visitors reordained seven Nigerians who had earlier been ordained by proxy by Pastor Clark of Faith Tabernacle. The visiting pastors later returned to England, but on June 22, 1932, Pastor George Perfect and Prophet High Vaughan came to Nigeria to strengthen fellowship between Nigerian brothers and British Apostolic Church. For some time, the religious activities of the white missionaries complemented the evangelical exploit of Prophet Babalola. This relationship made the church leaders to name the church Nigerian Apostolic Church. But the expectation of Nigerians that their affiliation to British Apostolic Church would mitigate or eliminate their persecution by the colonial administration became an illusion as the authorities were unrelenting in their persecution of the church. In spite of this, the Nigerian church managed to remain with the Bradford Apostolic Church until 1940, when the white men were caught taking drugs to heal their fever. This crisis over doctrine of divine healing divided the leadership of the Nigerian church into two. The pre-European group was led by Pastor S.O. Adeboyega, a civil servant who had been assisting Pastor Hodubanjo in the Faith Tabernacle Assembly in Lagos, while Apostle Joseph Ayobabalola, Pastor Dio Odubanjo, and Pastor I.B. Akinyele led the Nigerian group. Hence, at the General Executive Council meeting held at Ibadan on December 22, 1941, church delegates made up of all pastors as well as two lay representatives from each assembly proposed Christ Apostolic Church, CAC, as the new name to be finalized at the following convention. On that occasion, the principal officers of the new church together with their deputies were proposed. But as Joseph Sadare, aka Sinade, the SY leader of the Nigerian Faith Tabernacle Group, declined holding office in the new church, Isaac Akinyele, who was first suggested as his deputy, became president, with Jacob Odushono as his deputy. Others were David Odubanjo as general superintendent, while Joseph Babalola was general evangelist, with David Babajide as his deputy. At the following convention, which was held at Efuanlaye in April 1942, the name Christ Apostolic Church, CAC, was unanimously adopted. Hence, in May 1943, the church was registered under the Nuns Perpetual Succession Ordinance of 1924 with the registration number 147. These are the tenets of Christ Apostolic Church. They are 13 in number. 
Number one, the unity of the Godhead and the trinity of persons therein. Number two, the hotter depravity of human nature, the necessity for repentance and regeneration, and the eternal doom of the finally impenitent. Number three, the virgin birth, sinless life, atoning death, triumphant resurrection, accession and abiding intercession of our Lord Jesus Christ, his second coming and millennial reign on earth. Number four, justification and sanctification of the believers through the finished work of Christ. Number five, the baptism of the Holy Ghost for believers with signs following. Number six, the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost for edification, exhortation, and comfort of the church, which is the body of Christ. Number seven, the sacraments of baptism by immersion and the Lord's Supper. Number eight, the divine inspiration and authority of the Holy Scriptures. Number nine, church government by apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, elders, and deacons. Number ten, the possibility of falling from grace. Number eleven, the obligatory nature of tithes and offerings. Number twelve, divine healing through obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ and faith in his name and merit of his blood for all sicknesses, diseases, and infirmities. Number 13, faith in God, the Jehovah Jireh to supply all your financial needs without going into debt or borrowing money on interest and to be content with having food and raiment Godliness with contentment is a great gain, and the love of money is the root of all evils. Those are the 13 tenets of the Christ Apostolic Church. church is soul winning and spiritual reawakening of the world. Why the mission statement is leading people into the knowledge of God through an in-depth study of the word of God, prevailing prayer and spiritual worship. And the motto of the church is one fold, one shepherd, according to John chapter 10 verse 16. Church has had seven presidents in the past, and the current one being the eighth. Um, the past presidents were the first president was Pastor Isaac Babalola Akinyele. He was president from 1943 to 1964. The second was Pastor Josiah S. B. Odusono. He was president from 1964 to 1966. The third president was Pastor Elijah Titus Olatunde. He was president from 1966 to 1983. The fourth president was Pastor Joseph Bolade Orogu, who was president from 1983 to 1991. The fifth president was Pastor John Dadaobafemi. He was president from 1993 to 1997. The sixth president was Pastor E. H. Helulu He was president from 1997 to year 2011. And the seventh president was Pastor Ehuwa Kiyoshi, who was president from 2011 to 2020. The incumbent president, who is the eighth president of the Christ Apostolic Church, is Pastor Samuel O. Oladele, who assumed leadership in the year 2021. 
Also, the church had had 11 general superintendents in the past, and the current one being the 12th. They were the first general superintendent was Pastor David Osmond Udubanjo from 1943 to 1959. The second being Pastor S.B. Udusono from 1959 to 1964. The third, Pastor J.E. Medayeshe from 1964 to 1975. The fourth, Pastor Joseph Bolade Orogbu from 1975 to 1983. The fifth being Pastor Abraham O.A. Ulutime from 1983 to 1991. The sixth was Pastor E.H.L. Olusheye from 1993 to 1997. The seventh was Pastor Daniel O.A. Oloye from 1997 to 2006. The eighth was Pastor Paul O. Bandele from 2007 to 2010. The ninth was Pastor Abraham O. Akinoshim from 2011 to 2012. The tenth was Pastor Hembo Wabaje from 2012 to 2014. The eleventh, the eleventh general superintendent was Pastor S. O. Oladele from 2014 to 2020. And the incumbent general superintendent of the church is Pastor E. O. Odejobi, who has on the leadership in the year 2021. Likewise, um, the Christ Apostolic Church has had for general evangelist in the past, and the fifth one is the incumbent. The first general evangelist of the church was Apostle Joseph Hayo Babalola from 1943 to 1959. The second general evangelist was Prophet D. O. Babajide from 1959 to 1991. The third was Prophet Jehu Ulu Alokan who was general evangelist from 1993 to 2006. The fourth general evangelist was past Prophet S. K. Abiara from 2007 to 2017. The fifth and the incumbent general superintendent of the Christ Apostolic Church is Prophet Ezekiah Ho Oladeji, who has been the general evangelist since 2017 till date.